does this particular individual need to be in custody to keep the community safe? That needs to be the question. We're making it possible for people who are non-violent offenders to get back to their families, get back to work, and get back to court. We want to make sure the right people are, are in jail, uh, that need to be in jail, and the right people are out of jail. In California right now, when people are arrested, there's an automatic money bail amount that's set. If you have money, you can just pay that amount and you're out that day. If you can't make those payments, your option is to go and get a bail bond from the bail bonds industry. And often you or your family is to put up a lot of collateral, your house, your car, other things. No matter how much you paid to a bail bondsman, you don't get that back whether charges are eventually dismissed or not. That can lead to a spiraling crisis for a family that's already in a time of crisis because of the arrest. We've all seen TV shows where someone is arrested, goes into court, and the judge says, all right, your bail is set at 10000 But what's a lot less discussed and I think less well understood is whether bail works. When people do bad things, they should be dealt with with repercussions. Supervisor Chavez made the decision to create a bail and release work group. People are like, what are you doing? Isn't it just safer to have people locked up? And the truth of the matter is, it isn't. We took pains to make sure that we had all of the relevant people at the table, those who are involved in the pretrial justice system, so everyone from the jail administration, our district attorney, our probation department, our public defender, our office of pretrial services, and also members of the community. We're looking at public safety and doing it in a way that's constitutionally appropriate and spends our money in an effective, respectful way. We were the first county in California to implement a locally validated pretrial risk assessment instrument. We're going to be looking at expanding pretrial services to handle more people that are in need of some potential oversight. The second is we're putting out an RFP that's going to look at a community bail fund and also one that will expand our ability to provide community services to people when they're out on bail prior to their court hearings. And then three, we've added a tool that is an overlay to our pretrial services assessment that looks specifically at domestic violence, so we make sure that we're doing the very most we can to keep families safe. We're not talking about serious and violent felonies. They're not eligible for release on pretrial, other than if they pay money, ironically. We need people to understand that what we're talking about with bail reform is we're talking about making sure that our justice system is in fact just, and we're not penalizing people because they're poor. Now, ultimately, it's of course the judge's decision who gets released and who doesn't, but the whole point of our efforts is to make sure that those decisions are made based on public safety factors and not based on whether someone can pay. The vast majority of people who are arrested are arrested for minor crimes and are gonna return to society anyway, and so it behooves us to be thoughtful about that fact and how we can make sure that we're helping them get on the right track, not putting them in a spiral where they're gonna come back over and over and over again into our system.